You're listening to the Visibly Fit Podcast. Hey, I'm your host, Wendy Pett, and every week I'll give you holistic, practical solutions for everyday issues related to nutrition, healing, functional fitness, and behavior modifications. As a natural path fitness expert and wellness coach for over 20 years, my goal is to empower you to reach for greater health and to rise up to your next level of living in mind, body, and spirit. You were created with greatness in mind. It's time to own it. Are you with me? Then let's dive in. Hello and welcome to this episode of Visibly Fit. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. How's your prayer life? Yeah, it's a question that might make you kind of uneasy or maybe not. But most people that I know would like to get better in their prayer life. Maybe you're one that's like, yeah, you know, I'm okay with my prayer, but I could be better. And I wish I knew how to pray better. And I wish I had people around me that I could pray with. Well, we're going to talk all about prayer. And um, I have an incredible prayer warrior that's going to be on this episode with me today. I've had the opportunity to pray with her and for her, and I've known her for so many years. And she is what I would call even an expert in prayer, which seems she would never accept that title. But I feel like she really is an expert in prayer uh, because, you know, you become an expert uh, based in, you know, they say 10,000 hours of doing something, you become a master at doing that item. Well, I definitely know she's got 10,000 hours plus in with praying uh, with on her own prayers and in her own prayer life, but also for praying for others. But you're going to be blessed immensely uh, because today we have Sharon Hill on the call or on the episode today. She's on the call, she's on Zoom, but on the episode today. And she is actually president. President Emeritus for uh, Christian Women and Media Association, and that is actually how I first met her so many years ago. Uh, she's the founder of On Call Prayer, and she's the past president of Fellowship of Professional Women. Sharon has spent more than 40 years training, mentoring, and ministering to venues of all sizes, and because of her belief in the power of intentional prayer, along with discovering victory through real life experiences, we'll talk about a few of those, she empowers others how to discover inner strength and develop an effective prayer life. Now, Sharon has a gift of administration and organization, like seriously, this woman is organized uh, with a background as a corporate executive to include uh, president of an international marketing company and sales and management for a Fortune 500 company. Sharon has trained thousands of men and women nationally. Sharon now uses her expertise in full-time ministry. And in this unprecedented time of uncertainty, Sharon's passion is leading women's prayer retreats called Becoming Women of Intentional Prayer. Sharon often referred to as the prayer coach. Okay, maybe not prayer expert, but we'll call her prayer coach. I like that. Has a strong belief and every leader needs the prayer covering of a des designated prayer shield. And we'll talk about what a prayer shield is. And she really leans on Ecclesiastes 4.12, where it says a cord of three strands is not quickly or easily broken. Sharon and her husband, Ronnie, they live in a, they have a blessed life in Texas and they have four grown children and several grandchildren. She's the author of the On Call Prayer Journal, Christian Women in Media Prayer Journal, The Power of Three, How a Protective Shield, um, uh, How a Protective Shield of Intentional Prayer Can Transform Your Life, and the On Call pocket prayer book and co-author of a children's book called the most powerful p probably that p is prayer that's my guess actually i know it is and it's an activity book and prayer journal so you can visit her website at oncar oncallprayer.org so i know you will enjoy this episode well welcome to visibly fit sharon i'm so excited that you're here Thank you for inviting me. It's my honor. Thank you. Uh, it's so much fun. And you know, uh, those of you listening, and I know you know Sharon because we've known each other for a long time, but visibly fit is more than just being visibly, visibly fit physically. It's mind, body, spirit, emotionally. And we really want to uh, talk on the spiritual component uh, in this episode, because you have um, uh, oncallprayer.com and you yes. have been just dedicated for so many yes. years yes. in teaching women how to pray 
and to um, and to really understand the power of prayer. And so let's talk about really how that all got started for you and how you got on this mission. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Well, um, I always ask uh, anyone that I'm speaking with, an audience or just friends, um, on a scale one to 10, how would you grade your personal prayer life? Do you only grade, do you only pray when you're on the run or when you're in crisis like me, I pray in crisis? <laughs> or um, do you really, have you developed uh, a lifestyle of intentional prayer? And so um, going back, I have retired four or five different times in my professional career, ministry career and everything. And I had uh, developed the prayer shield uh, ministry, which we're going to talk about. And a friend came to me and said, um, you have got to continue and you have got to tell the world about the prayer shield, but you need a ministry. And I didn't have a name of a ministry. And so we met for several hours and days and all trying to put everything together. And, and I, we just couldn't come up with a name uh, because every time we pray, name with prayer on it, it had already been taken or whatever. And one of her uh, employees sitting in this um, in this room said something about, you know, uh, God's always on call. And I was thinking like on star in my car. Yeah, right. But, uh, <laughs> it's kind God's of like call, that. And that's how we developed oncallministry.org. And so uh, that is how, exactly how it happened. It was kind of by accident, just a phrase that was said. And so my passion is, and my scripture is Jeremiah 33, 3, this is call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not even know. I had some words there, but that's kind of the background of On Call Prayer, how it began. That was in 2007. And it just continues on uh, as I share about, uh, you know, being on call, that God's on call. We don't have to leave a voicemail and, and uh, we're never put on hold. He's always on call. That that's is it. such, that's such a good word. I love it, Sharon. And um, I think that that's um, a good word for someone listening today that might feel like they've been put on hold, that, yes. that yes. God is not really hearing their prayer in that moment. And, and we'll get back to them later. And that's really not how God operates. Um, so can you speak to the, the woman that's like, you know, I've been praying for this, this one thing over and over, and I'm not seeing any shift. Yes. What would you say to that woman? Because I know that you've been there personally. Been I have there. too. It's like, talk about you know, that. are you there, Father? I am crying out to you in desperation. And, you know, um, delay is not denial. Yeah. And he's always on time. We serve an on-time God. And he already knows our prayers before we even voice them to him or think them to him. And so I have to remember that scripture, you know, and that he is always on call. He is, uh, he knows our needs. Uh, we want it yesterday. And, and he knows the future that we don't know. And the delays are for purposes and that he answers every prayer. And so that's, that's the answer to that. Yeah, Just so, waiting so on true. God. It's hard to wait on God. Right. You know, waiting is not a waste of time. That's right. Can we can we talk about maybe how you have had to wait on God in a in a your own personal uh, situation or circumstance that you're starting to see some some yes. uh, some yes. prayers answered? Well, I have had some prodigals in my life, and I do a whole thing on a whole message on prodigals and those. Uh, who, who, who you love and so how to pray for the prodigals are the different family members in your family and I have had three prodigals actually and one in particular uh, has really struggled with alcohol for uh, entire life but God is just working so we just have miracles finally and it's because I you know uh, this is one thing I want to say, if you are a mother or a grandmother or have a mother figure, maybe a spiritual mother to someone in your life, I think about Jesus. You know, I believe he is so compassionate and tenderhearted to mothers. Mm -hmm. I think about him on the cross and there is his mother, Mary, watching her son 
be crucified. I can't even imagine, can't imagine. No. what she was going through in her heart. And he had compassion for her. He looked down and he told John to take care of his mother as he was dying on that cross. That just gives me so much encouragement yeah. how the compassion of Jesus for the role model of a mother. Yeah. And it's beautiful that you mentioned that as this episode, if you're listening to it live time is being released during Holy week. And, and that's just something to, to think about as, as we're going into this, this Easter weekend, this resurrection weekend and, and, and Friday and, you know, Sunday's coming and all the things, but what actually happened and transpired. And so, yeah, thinking about mother Mary, right. And, and how Jesus really did have compassion for her. That's, that's beautiful. Well, um, so, so someone that's listening needs to hear. Yes. God has compassion for you too. And he yes, is yes, making a way, making a way. Yes. And he's made he a way. Every, he has every detail of our life and every palm of his hand. Yes. And so yes. that's the promise we can claim. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm really big at uh, getting my uh, patients to write out uh, and journal, uh, just journaling is so powerful. And I know that you are a big fan of journaling and prayer journaling. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about that and how um, it's, it's important to do that so that you can, um, well, just tell us why I'm not going to fill okay. in the, the void there. Well, I have uh, just a little clip of my life. I was married uh, at 18 to a man 21, and I had come from a home that had an alcoholic father. So all I wanted to do is get married, uh, make curtains, bake bread, and have babies. And that was my <laughs> goal in life. So I married a man going into the ministry. We moved from Houston to Dallas to go to Bible school and then to seminary and all of that. And to make a long story short, uh, when the, my children were two, four, and six, my hu husband came home and uh, told me that he had another woman pregnant with his baby and he abandoned us. Mm. So I was devastated. Mm. But I got my children around me, told them that we had each other, we had the love of God, and we were going to make it. And my five or six year old said, uh, Mother, is it okay with you if I sit at the head of the table? And that's what we did. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I was a single a year, married a man that loved my children. Mm. I mean, I thought, who's going to marry a woman with three children? What and so, of my children, I was 25. He was 26. He adopted them. So we all had the same last name. So there was no embarrassment about two names. We were married at 12 years, but he became a very, it was a Cinderella story. I mean, Cinderella story with a home, live-in maids, traveling, the whole thing. He was a great father in the beginning, got started drinking in his business and mm. I had no choice but to leave him just for our own safety. Okay. Wow. So here I am, Lord, uh, what is going on? All I wanted to do was have babies, break bread and make bread and break bread too. And yeah. bread. <laughs> Curtains and, and, you know, and so, um, uh, I started journaling and I, it was journaling. I journaled my way to healing. Mm. And every day I would ask God to give me, what are you saying to me today? And I would write that out. And then I would reflect back what he said last week or last month or two months ago. And I could see him working and all the scriptures I would claim. And as a result of that, I have published the On Call Prayer Journal. Yes. And in that journal, it has three it has scriptures uh, to prepare your heart for journaling, but it also has three questions. What are your, uh, how can you praise God today? Write that out. Mm -hmm. What are your prayer requests? Write that out. And what did God say to you today? And he is going to say something every day that you will think you'll never forget, but you will. But if you write it down, that gives hope. That gives encouragement. And one thing my prayer journals come with is a red pen because we forgot what he did last week or last month or six months ago. We're so worried about today and tomorrow. And if we reflect back and look at those old prayer requests, how he worked and write the answers in red ink, mm -hmm. that gives hope. 
And that's what I needed as I journaled my way to healing. So I really believe in journaling. So. I love that, Sharon. And our and our bodies start to respond differently when yes. we can have that gratitude of of seeing the hope fulfilled, right? Yes. And exactly. so we so we on physically paper. you see it on yeah paper. you see it on paper. That's right. Yes. Yes. And then you start to it starts to manifest physically in your yes. body with yes. healing. And so yes. it's just it's a beautiful way that it, it's a ripple yes. effect. And so yes. I love that you are uh, very much adamant about journaling, right. especially your right. prayers. Now, let me say, yeah. I was sick. I have to finish that story. Please. Because I was single eight months, eight years, thought I'd never get married, you know, was very uh, successful in the corporate world. And I uh, came to Fort Worth to a Bible study and look across the room and saw the best looking man I ever saw in my life. Hello, Ronnie. That was Ronnie <laughs> Hill. And uh, he had, he was 40, never been married. I thought there was something wrong with him. <laughs> so, so anyway, we got married two years later and we've been married 35 years. Well, so, praise God. I, he was, he was just waiting on the right woman, which was you. So that's fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. Well, God restores and he redeems and he heals. Yeah. And you are a living testimony of that in so many different ways. But I love your heart. I love that you are so uh, just persevering in, in, in having a determinating um, desire to teach and train women on how to really pray. And you have this thing called uh, the prayer shield. And I want to talk yes. about that prayer shield and this prayer yes. shield covenant. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Cause you called me one day and shared this with me and it was very um, uh, powerful and okay. it, it was very eye opening, I guess. And, mm -hmm. and, and within, after you shared this with me, I literally had someone call me within that week as a prayer partner. Oh, wonder. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about well, it. Let me tell you that the scripture is found from Ecclesiastes 412. And it says, though one be overpowered, two can defend themselves. But a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Right. And so there are... The number three, I got to write about this in my book. The number three is in the Bible. Let me see how many times, a lot of times. It is in the Bible. The number three is in the Bible 467 times. Hmm. Okay. The number three. All right. Now, uh, what is a prayer shield? Who should have a prayer shield? Why do you need a prayer shield? Uh, how do you form a prayer shield? Well, I am glad you asked. <laughs> let you, okay. Let me tell you what it is not. It is not a prayer partner. Now, you need a prayer partner. I pray for you. You pray for me. We walk through life doing it. I have wonderful prayer partners. It is not a prayer team. I have that too. You need a prayer team, a group of people that will be praying for you and your ministry or your business or your life or your family. A prayer shield is taking prayer to a whole higher level. And this is straight from God. I did not read it in a book. I didn't hear a sermon. The Holy Spirit spoke this to me. And just a real quick story is that in year 2002, I was asked to be a women's minister on staff of the pastoral staff of a church and they are like most churches or a lot of churches where you have great women's events and bible studies and dinners and christmas dinners and all of that that's what we had in our church and but there was not a standalone women's ministry and so I said the only way I could do this to make it work and this really came from my corporate background I never wanted to go into ministry and but God used that corporate background for ministry so I had the background of how to organize and lead and all speak and all that so uh, okay I just had to put a, a, a pen here because you had the most incredible 
organizational <laughs> skills of anyone I've ever met. Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. what I will say. I do know that. Okay. So <laughs> I put a survey out to the women of the church, and this is a mid-sized church, one huge, one small. It's about 1,200 people come to this church, right? Okay. So uh, I put a survey out. What do you want? And they listed all the different things. And I said, put L, I had a little survey, put L if you want to lead, P if you want to participate. Well, I had a bunch of L's. So I invited them all over my living room, about 25 women. And from that, we put together 10 ministries. Well, you know, like Bible study, big events, large events, childcare, uh, uh, mentoring, uh, food pantry, different 10 ministries. Okay, so... We had people on this survey that wanted to pray. Well, we need prayer people, right? Well, God had given me the scripture out of Ecclesiastes. So I take Bible study. Tiffany was over Bible study. Tiffany, here's your three names. Here's your three, three prayer part, three you know, warriors. And I, I just, we just gave names out and it kind of worked for a while and didn't work. Some people moved and we went through a year. I said, let's start over. Let's start over. Tiffany. You're over Bible study. Now, let me tell you how, to, how God has told me to do this. We need women on a prayer shield that are women of the word. Women who are uh, know how to fight warfare, warriors. Yeah. I mean, intercessors. Yes. We need women who are confidential. They don't tell each other. They don't even talk together. That only person I need to talk to is God. They don't tell their husband. It's you can tell them anything confidentially. That's the kind of woman you need. Mm -hmm. And women that would stand in the gap for you. And even will hear from God when to do it, even if you don't express a need. You pray for those three, three of those kind of women. Women need women, men need men. And so, um, so that's how we formed it. And I'm telling you, every one of the 10 ministries had their three. Now you don't get them all at the same time. You don't get them all tomorrow. And as the example, uh, the late Thelma Wells has passed yeah. away. I presented this to her for 10 years. She kept saying, I have people that pray for me. And so <laughs> once she got it, you know, once she got it, yeah. she I was her prayer ship. It took her a whole year before she trusted a second person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's where God, yeah. and I knew everything about her when she went to the beauty shop, every need she had, every personal need. She needed that because she had such a high profile in public. And you just can't tell everything in public, but you need to be prayed for. Right. And so this is how it has worked all these years. I've had a prayer shield since year 2002. Now, I asked my prayer shield to sign a covenant. This is serious, ladies. This is serious selection. Mm -hmm. and uh and that covenant is on my website about do's and don'ts of being a prayer shield and they sign it i ask them to commit for one year now wendy the one thing's a little awkward about it is you're used to praying for each other and so i would ask them to pray for things and kind of feel bad, but I didn't ask them how i could pray for them that's see this is the difference they are a prayer covering yeah the over shield. you and yeah. your ministry or your business yeah i, I mentioned that after you and i talked that i had a prayer partner come in i meant i had a prayer, a prayer, one shield. Of the prayer shield yes yeah. so you can tell her mm -hmm. things and you don't feel like you but i pray for my prayer sure shield every day and i at the end of the year i take them out into dinner lunch and treat them and give them gifts and blah 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 but i this is a purpose to be a covering mm -hmm. and i want to quote something to you uh, i thought this is so interesting there's actually a book named prayer shield now it, i didn't get anything out of this book at all but there is a book uh, written by peter wagner and i want to tell you what he says in here okay the author of this book says make no mistake about it the higher you go on the ladder of christian leadership the higher you go on satan's hit list if the en enemy if the enemy has a choice he will devour a leader before he would devour anyone else. It is true that all Christians are subject, but Satan is more specific, persistent, and intentional when it comes to pastors and other ministry leaders.
Yeah. Yeah, because if, if he can take the leader out, then he can take uh, out uh, the exactly. rest of the tribe. But that's exactly my heart. There. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. I, I love this, Sharon, because it's a concept that a lot have not really ever heard. They know prayer partner, they know prayer team. And just like you said, yes. they've just not heard of yes. prayer shield. Yes. And there is a difference. So, um, you know, I know that I can go to and they, they come to you, which is what you had said to me on the phone. You know, you'll be surprised. All of a sudden they'll just come oh, out yeah. of blue. Like oh, yeah, God just dropped yeah. them in and yeah. you're thinking, oh, I don't really talk to that person much, but all of a sudden they become your prayer shield and they start asking how they can pray for you. And it's just random and wonderful. <laughs> well, Wendy, let me give you two examples. Yes. Jesus had a prayer shield of three. Good point. James and John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Daniel, Peter, James and John. Yeah. Daniel had three mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He went to them to interpret the dream. He pleaded with them to interpret that dream. This so is good. nothing new. This so is good. from the scripture of the three. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so something. good. I love that. I love that. So uh, if you're listening today and you're thinking, I, I, I would love to have a prayer shield, but I don't even have a prayer partner. Um, mm -hmm. How do I even go about? The, this prayer shield you pray about it right <laughs> you you pray to god to say bring me yes. a prayer shield bring yes. me not just yes. prayer partners but a prayer shield and um god will deliver on yes. his timing yes. so um I, I love this sharon thank you so much for for sharing about this because it's so important that our spiritual prayer life is intact because everything yes. falls into the other you can't just compartmentalize your life um yes. and your your spiritual well-being uh, just really is, is on display, even within your physical well-being. Yes. So yes. it's, it's very, very impactful and powerful. So good. What would you, um, uh, where would you send people to find out more? Is it on car on call Is that yes, the name? Yes. On call prayer.org. And you'll find different things on there. There's a, a PDF file. You can print out of the covenant. There's all kinds of prayer shield things. And, and yeah, your journal is there that they can purchase. My, I, that's on the book on the store. Yes. 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 Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Tab, and that's there as well. Thank you. And well, I love it. A book called the power of three which is yes. about the shield. Oh, okay. that's perfect. Yes, that the power is. of three. Yes. Wonderful. Well, yes. on this week, again, as we're listening to this, uh, as we're doing this live time, as far as Holy Week is concerned, yes. uh, I would like for you to pray us out. I think that would be perfect. Oh, okay. And, and okay. then we can end this, um, this episode oh, with a beautiful thank prayer. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Heavenly Father. <clears throat> What a beautiful opportunity to come to you today. And Lord, I know that uh, people will be viewing this uh, interview. And Lord, everyone is going through something. And so I thank you that you'll draw the ones that need to hear this today, that it would speak in to their heart. And Lord, we know that's important to pray, but not only important to pray, but to develop a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. a lifestyle of not just prayer but intentional prayer so i pray that if this is spoken to anyone's heart and maybe they would be led to form a prayer shield father that you would just lay on their heart one person at a time men need men women need women and we know that it takes time for you to call the three that you would choose but I pray that that might be something that would enhance their life encourage everyone needs encouragement Lord and it's great to know that we could have a prayer covering as we walk through difficult times Lord our world is falling apart at the seams we must become people of intentional prayer as we pray for our families for all the chaos this world is chaos lord and we need to be women and men of prayer so thank you so much for uh, for this time for this opportunity to not present me lord to present you and that we can just call upon you and you will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. We know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we praise you today as we go into this season now of Christ sacrificing, dying and raising again. 
risen again for us, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank okay. you, beautiful friend. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being on this episode of Visibly Fit. Okay. okay. Right. Blessings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this episode of Visibly Fit with Sharon Hill and talking about all about prayer and how to have um, just a prayer shield, uh, the power of three, right? And so be praying those people into your life if you don't have them in your life right now. But I hope this blessed you. Again, if you want her uh, incredible journal and her on-call um, uh, her on-call prayer journal and also the power three book and her other resources go to oncallprayer.org and you can get all that information there and if you are on a mission to get your health and your well-being in a place that you fully deserve to be operating at your optimal level as God intended, then we would love to assist you. Uh, go to wendypet.com for some free resources, or if you're ready to take massive action, go to getvisiblyfit.com, and that's where you can participate in the seven-week accelerator program where the average person releases anywhere from 20 to 30, I've seen 35 pounds in just seven weeks. It's not all about the weight. It's also about releasing unhealthy emotions, releasing unhealthy habits and getting on track, getting on the right trajectory for your health. So would love to coach you through that. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to email me as well, but that's where you'll go is uh, getvisiblyfit.com or wendypet.com. All right, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Visibly Fit. And again, if you're listening to this live time, um, happy resurrection weekend. And uh, I actually pray for you as, as my listener, believe it or not. And I believe that there is power in prayer, even in, with those that you don't know, right? We can pray for the people that we don't know. And so I pray for you and um, I'm believing in great things for, for you and your family. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Visibly Fit. And uh, we will catch you next time. Same time, same place. Be blessed. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love spending this time with you. To learn more and get more free resources, just head on over to wendypet.com. And thank you in advance for sharing this episode and this podcast, following and subscribing, not only to this podcast, but finding me on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are, I'm probably there too. Until next week in our next podcast time together, make it a visibly fit day.